Hey everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com. Uh, it's past Tuesday again. It's falling on the 14th because the second Tuesday happens to just fall that late. That's fantastic for us. But overall, as far as past Tuesdays go, this one is great if you ignore what happened on May 30th with the zero day, which I'm going to. We're working on what's got closed today. All right, and the, uh, the first thing we want to cover, I guess, I guess we should go into the details. 60 exploits overall were closed. Only three of those are critical. None of them are currently known, and none of them are actively being exploited. That's, that's kind of the dream scenario. That's about as light as it gets. We, we should uh, strive for this more often. Uh, as far as the three critical, there's two that are, I mean, no critical is great, but they're not, not as bad as far as critical go, and one that's real bad. So if we're going to start focusing on it, uh, I guess we'll cover the one that's real bad first. And that one is a remote executable for the network file system. Uh, this one is network attack vector, low complexity, no uh, permissions required, and no user inter interaction needed. That's wormable, uh, based on all the indicators. They don't say wormable in there, but I see that that group of uh, what are we, of metrics as real bad. That should be a 10.0. Uh, the reason it's a 9.8 is not all NFS is uh, is exposed to this one. Uh, versions two or version three are secure. It's if you have version 4.1 that you're at risk, uh, which is it's a little bit interesting. Last month we had an NFS, NFS one that was very similar to this that impacted versions 2 and versions 3. Uh, so my guess is they didn't think it impacted 4, and it does, and so they just extended out to that. I mean, if it is something completely new and it's just that similar, I mean, hooray for coincidences. I'm wrong on this one, but it just it feels like the same thing uh, to me. Overall, you can have the same workaround that you had last time where you could come in to PowerShell and set the NFS server configuration, NSF4, to false. Just know your environment before you do that. If you are using uh, N NS NFS4 uh, extensively and you shut that down, it can cause all kinds of problems. So last month when they had that, they had it to uh, do the disable for version 2 and version 3. If you did that last month and then you do this, you're going to have a real bad time with your file systems. So just... Make sure you know what you're impacting. If, if you are relying on 4 and running, that's going to bring down your environment. I mean, I wouldn't do that. This patch does fix the issue. You might just want to move up your, your patch timetable in that case because it is bad. You want to get it patched. Uh, if you're not using 4, fantastic. Just run that one line. You're good to go. Uh, the next one we want to cover is uh, another critical. It's a 7.5 on the CVSS scale. Uh, it's at tax LDAP. It's also remote, but it does require privileges, and it has a high attack complexity, which means there's a lot that goes into this one. If this one's being used against you, it's because it wasn't just an attack of opportunity. They were, they were looking for something, I imagine. I mean, I'm not an expert, that, but I imagine. Uh, one nice thing about this one, not all LDAP is uh, at risk for this one. If you have the max received bus buffer set to your default, you're fine. If you have gone over the default, that's when you're at risk. This seems really similar. I think we had something similar to this last month as well. So if last time you were over and you set it back to the default because of this warning, you've already protected yourself. If you didn't last month, maybe it's time to uh, look at the reasons you're above the default and see if it's necessary because it seems to be a common attack vector. Uh, the last one, and this one's an 8.5 on CVSS, and it impacts uh, Hyper-V only. And once again, it does require some privileges and has a high complexity. But what this allows is someone on a... Hyper-V machine to run uh, arbitrary code against the Hyper-V host, which, I mean, I'm, I'm nervous about running non-arbitrary code on the Hyper-V host, so I definitely don't want arbitrary code on there. Uh, on this one, where they do have to have some privileges, that doesn't mean it needs a lot. I believe they could just have the default account as long as they can log in. They can run this one, so you're at risk. So if you're using Hyper-V, this is probably one you want to take a look at sooner or later. You want to get patched. But overall... 60 is a fantastic number. That's not a lot. There's only three critical. Nothing's out in the wild. Like I said, we are ignoring the May 30th uh, zero day because that was unpleasant. I didn't like it. So ignoring that, what a great month for Patch Tuesday. Let's hope we can get a whole bunch of... If we get three or four months like this, then we're just going to assume all hackers are just... Uh, they're taking summer off, which, I mean, if you've, you've earned it. You've been doing a great job breaking into our stuff recently. That's it for Patch Tuesday. Uh... Even though not, nothing's super serious outside of the 9.8, patch that. Automating this is better than not. So I guess the sooner you can 
have your systems tested, run out there, get everything patched, keep you safe and secure, the better for you, the better you sleep at night, everyone's happier. Uh, but for PTQ.com, I'm Jordan, and uh, I'm supposed to, to do one of those pose things. What I do in the take that I forgot to turn on the record, the thinking man? Yeah. yeah I'm thinking about stuff. I'm thinking about starting recording this time. <laughs>